I am so excited because today I'm continuing my animal cake series with this adorable goat cake. Not only is it super cute, the inside of the cake actually matches the outside. It has a goat cheese frosting and a fig jam filling. I know this sounds a little crazy, so you can definitely use cream cheese frosting if that seems a little bit too out there for you. Now the first step is to work on our little goat's face and ears. The ears are going to need time to dry because they're pretty big and you want them to be firm when you add them to the cake so that they don't crack or break. So with our black, white, and pink fondant, we're making our little goat's eyes, its nose, its mouth, its ears, and then for the horns, I actually added a tiny bit of brown food coloring into my white fondant to make it kind of a nice, almost ivory color. We're gonna set those aside to dry, and then it's time to work on our cake layers. This cake is made with fluffy buttermilk cake layers that are so delicious and really pair well with that filling. One batch of batter can be used to make three eight inch cake layers or four seven inch cake layers. And I wanted a little bit of height to my cake, so I made this cake with seven inch cake layers. We start off by combining our dry ingredients, which include our flour, our sugar, our baking powder, and our salt. Once those have been whisked together, we're mixing in room temperature butter and mixing on a medium speed until all that butter is incorporated and the mixture kind of looks like moist sand or wet sand. Then we're adding in our egg whites, which we're gonna mix in on a medium speed, and the batter should start to look kind of thick at this point. And that's when we add in our remaining wet ingredients, which include our buttermilk. I like to add in my buttermilk in two additions just so that it doesn't splash out of my bowl as it's mixing. And once that's incorporated, we mix in our oil and our vanilla extract. Once our batter is nice and smooth, we're gonna pour it into our prepared pans and bake it at 350 degrees for about 33 to 35 minutes. In my oven, it's usually 35, but everyone's oven bakes a little bit differently. While our cake layers bake, we're gonna work on that goat cheese frosting. Now this frosting is so smooth and delicious and we use both goat cheese and some honey actually to give it just an incredible flavor. We start off by creaming together our butter and our goat cheese. Now remember, if goat cheese is a little two out there for you, you can always use cream cheese in place of the goat cheese, cup for cup. We're gonna mix this together on a low speed until it's nice and smooth, and then we add in our honey, our vanilla extract, and our salts. Once those are combined, we slowly start adding in our powdered sugar, and halfway through, we add in the heavy cream just to make the frosting easier to mix. Then we add in the rest of that powdered sugar, and we scrape the sides of the bowl as we do this just to make sure that everything's getting properly mixed together. Once our frosting is nice and smooth, it's time to color a little bit of it a brown color so that way our goat can have some cute little spots. So we're adding a half a cup of our frosting into a separate bowl and we're gonna mix into that one tablespoon of cocoa powder. This is gonna make your frosting a tiny bit thicker so you might wanna add in a splash of heavy cream or milk just to help thin it out. Once our buttercream is evenly colored, we're gonna place it in a small piping bag with a large round tip or if you don't have one, you can always just snip an opening at the end of the bag that's about half an inch wide. We're gonna seal off the top of the rubber band and set that aside. And then it's time to assemble our goat cake. As always, I like to add a dab of buttercream onto my cake board just to help that first cake layer stick in place. And then we're gonna spread an even layer of our goat cheese frosting and some fig jam on top of that. Now I highly recommend piping a ring of buttercream around your cake layer before adding your fig jam, just to make sure that everything stays in place and that your jam doesn't kind of like ooze out as you assemble your cake layers. It can make the situation really messy, so I highly recommend doing that. We're gonna repeat this process with all of our cake layers, making sure to flip that top cake layer upside down just to make it easier to get sharp corners. And then we're covering our cake in a thin coat of frosting to help lock in all of those crumbs. We're popping this cake into the freezer for about 10 minutes, or you can also use the fridge for about 30 until the frosting is firm to the touch. And then it's time to smooth on our second layer of frosting. Now this layer is a lot thicker and it really helps to use a bench scraper to get your frosting nice and smooth. I also use a small offset spatula to clean up the top edges to get really nice sharp corners. Once you're happy with how smooth your frosting is, it's time to pipe on our little goat's spots. So I made about three or four spots around my cake, not a lot, you want them to be pretty big, um, but they can really be any shape or size you want and you can add however many you'd like. I smoothed out my spots with a small offset spatula and then I also used an acetate sheet to get them really nice and smooth. The final step is just to add on our goat's face and ears and horns. 
If your buttercream starts to crust or firm up and you're having a hard time sticking your goat's face in place, you can always use little dabs of buttercream to help secure them. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're making this cake in advance or you're transporting it, you can add the facial features and the horns, but I highly recommend waiting to add the ears. They make it so much harder to store in the fridge and they can droop because they're so thick and long. So just be sure to add them in right before you serve the cake. And just like that, our goat cake is all ready to go. I usually am excited to cut into cakes, but this cake I was super excited to cut into because I was so curious how all those flavors were gonna play together. And let me tell you, I know it sounds crazy, but it was so delicious. I highly recommend trying this recipe with the goat cheese and the fig jam. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you wanna recreate this goat cake at home, the recipe is linked in the video description, or you can Google Chell Sweets goat cake. And until next time, happy baking.